Alright, hey guys. Um, so, great video ahead today. Um, what we're going to be looking at is the cost of bad practice. So, I often see um, and have experienced myself uh, frustration with, uh, I guess, not getting the results I want out of, uh, you know, practicing certain things on the longboard or surfing in general. So, that's what we're going to dive into today and some really good and effective methods and I guess a run through of the, the most common things I see and what we can do to fix the way that we're practicing our different maneuvers and our surfing uh, to be the most effective and guess the, get the best results. But had an epic session earlier today as well. Uh, that's what we're going to dive through. Um, a little bit of a surfing edit, um, some really, really fun lefts at my local break, some great nose rides and uh, really good turning sections as well. And then after that, we'll go through the um, how to yeah, get the best outcomes out of our practice. All right, let's get to it.
get into it. Um, I think this is a really, really good topic to be covering because I think quite often we think about when we go out to practice something with our surfing, um, there's not a real plan or a real structure. We know that we want to practice something. We know that we want to get better at it. Um, but in terms of knowing what the end result looks like or uh, developing, I guess, a, a framework for how to go about our practice, uh, yeah, we just get a little bit lost when we don't practice effectively and if we don't get the results that we want, you know, it can be frustrating, we can get a, a lack of confidence. We, I guess, won't improve as quickly as maybe we could. And also, for, for some of us, uh, you know, surfing is a, our, like a bit of an escapism and we uh, like to go surfing to have fun and uh, I guess it can put a little bit of a... Uh, a negative on some of the sessions we're having, which isn't a good thing. What we'll do today is we're gonna step through four uh, specific steps uh, to focus on how to make the most of our practice, um, to yield the best results, and also to make sure we're having the most fun and doing as well as possible. So the, the first thing, and I think maybe in one of the most important things, is making sure that you don't dilute your practice by doing too much at once. This is one of the first rules that I uh, place into the coaching that I do with people online and face to face and making sure that we've got a real purpose to our sessions. Um, and if we are going out to practice something, for example, say we're going out to cross stepping, we're really focusing on just cross stepping. And when we head out there, we're not mixing that in with turns, nose rides, barrels, anything like that. If we wanna make, uh, I guess, the most use of our time in the water for a practice session, then we need to make sure that that's gonna be what we have our focus on and that's what we're trying to do. Because for better practice, we do need to have uh, repetition and we need to be able to replicate that more often. When we hold off doing other maneuvers for the purpose of, again, for the sake of the example, the cross step, we'll be able to do more of them on each wave, so we're getting in more repetition, um, but we're also gonna wait for more appropriate sections and we're not gonna be so rushed. Um, when we're hopping from one maneuver to another, this is when we uh, a lot of our issues are caused as well because we're going to be less balanced and we're going to be more rushed. So making sure that you can take time to uh, just eye out each section uh, and wait uh, for the correct section for whatever maneuver you're doing is gonna be the best thing. If we're focusing on four things, uh, so for example, um, so we wanna focus on our drop knee turns, our layback turns, our um, hang tens, and then our, our cross stepping backwards. Um, you're gonna be trying to, uh, I guess, look for each of those things on the wave, and more often than not, either we're gonna be rushed and we're gonna be a little bit scattered on the wave, or we're just gonna surf the way we normally would surf because uh, you know there's too much to think about and more often than not, we just wanna surf the wave to have fun. It will take a little bit longer or it won't be as effective to, to practice in that way. Um, so yeah, first step, making sure that you don't dilute your practice by putting too much into the second. <laughs> Step number two is going to be making sure that you have a clear vision of what the optimal outcome will be. Again, if we use the cross-stepping example, we might think, okay, we want our cross-step um, to go from the tail to the middle of the board. We want uh, the same amount of time spent on each foot, for example. If we don't come in to the session knowing exactly what the optimal outcome or what maybe your success looks like, then it's really hard, I guess, sometimes when we're surfing to really isolate and pinpoint, okay, was that an effective session or did I kind of just go surfing um, and not really think about it too much? Um, because again, more often than not, if we do go out for a surf, I know um, it's something that I've struggled with a lot in the past, is it kind of just, you have in mind that you're gonna practice this, this and this, um, but you come out and go, I had a fun session, but I probably didn't really get out of it in terms of practice um, what I needed to. And so know exactly what it would look like uh, to, to succeed or to get what you want out of that session. And so visualizing the way you want to be doing something and then maybe how many times you are able to replicate that in a session. But even getting it once can be a really, really good outcome, depending on your uh, level of progression through that certain maneuver. All right, number three is uh, knowing exactly what to look for when you're going out there. So obviously we're gonna to need to look for certain things or different things uh, depending on what maneuver you're gonna be looking at. If we're looking to hang 10, obviously the position on the wave is gonna be different than if we're just looking to practice our cross stepping or if we're looking to do some sort of turn. So there's the three W's that we want to be remembering for this. We need to know what maneuver, what waves, and what part of the wave. So you should have a really crystal clear idea in your mind about what maneuver you're going to be completing and how that's going to look, and we would have achieved that in the previous step. We need to know what waves we're going for. Um, if you're looking for, 
uh, let's let's say we want to do a big, long, drawn-out carve. There's no point taking every wave in the session, um, and even the small little dribbly waves, because we're not going to be able to effectively execute that move on those waves. Um, so if we can, we want to make sure we're nice and patient and actually uh, waiting for the waves that are going to give us the best possible chance at uh, executing the maneuvers correctly. Now there'll be some moves where we can actually, you know, just catch any sort of waves and do it quite well. For example, if we're just learning to, you know, get the pattern of our cross stepping, um, a lot of waves will be conducive to that. But again, the long drawn out calves or the critical hang tens, we're looking for a certain, certain section. Um, so we need to make sure we're being patient by looking for the right waves. And then we also need to look at what part of the wave we need to be in. This will kind of combine with the first step that I included um, in terms of not doing too much. Um, but if we're being patient and looking for our certain maneuver on the wave, or we need to make sure that we're also looking for the right part of the wave. So a good example here is hang tens. If we're looking to practice our hang tens, there's no point going to the nose on a section that's gonna hang five. So you sit and you wait, you draw yourself back, try and get nice and critical and go for the 10 when the opportunity arises, um, rather than just going for every little nose ride and then hoping one will turn into a hang 10. It, is, it does really pay off to be patient. Um, and again, this is a really, really good way to get the most out of our session possible. fourth thing that I want to mention here is to actually space out your practice. So if we're practicing uh, every session, uh, I think it can get really monotonous and a bit dry and also just make us a bit frustrated, especially if we're not making the, uh, the progress that we want to. So, you know, this can be different for everyone, but as an example, we might do one practice session a week and then every other surf, you're just having fun. Um, you might be trying to include that into your sessions here and there, um, but yeah, I think we've got to remember that surfing is fun, uh, should be enjoyable, and whilst it's also really fun to learn and test yourself and try new things, uh, we do have to make sure that uh, we're, we're doing it for the love of it and then everything else is laid onto that. So the, the learning and the progress that we make uh, are in conjunction with how much fun we're having, hopefully. Um, so yeah, space it out. Make sure that um, you're fitting in enough fun sessions with your practice sessions um, but I do think it's really good to distinguish your fun sessions from your practice sessions uh, because otherwise again if we're doing practice uh, in and amongst I guess just surfing normally uh, it won't be as effective as we've already discussed in this uh, session and we might feel a little bit frustrated and then every surf might turn into something like that where we're just kind of practicing kind of catching waves which again if you're having fun with that stick with that who am I to say um, tell you what to do but um, I think it could be a really good idea to yeah have a one really effective session and then a bunch of fun throughout the week rather than uh, you know, three or four messy sessions where you didn't really kind of focus on what you needed to in the places that you needed to with a good idea of the end result. So yeah, I think they're my main tips for today. So as you might have seen the previous week, uh, we uh, did tip time as its own separate segment on, uh, on Wednesday. Um, and I think I might continue that this week. I think it uh, had a good response and people seem to like the division there. Um, so in the comments below, drop down anything you would like to potentially see uh, in tip time where we take a deep dive into your questions. Um, super fun and I might integrate them back into these videos at some point if I, uh, if I think that's a better way to go about it. But again, let me know what you think. Um, having a lot of fun with that segment as well. And other than that, again, thank you for the support. With the merchandise, we're uh, coming along really well with that. We've got the designs and we're uh, talking to, I guess, the manufacturers and stuff like that. So we're getting that underway. Um, thanks everyone for staying patient there and I'll uh, be contacting everyone who's uh, asked for an order uh, as soon as that's ready to roll out. Um, but super, super stoked on that. If anyone wants to support, um, you can check out the, the links in the description below or even any coaching or anything like that. Um, yeah, or even just uh, have a bit of a chat. Hope you guys are getting waves. We've got tip time coming this Wednesday, but otherwise uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yoo.